Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale Dragon M4A3 Sherman tank. Since the last video update, the last of the components have been added to the model and the tank is now ready for painting. We'll be going over these additions in this video. Starting with the tank's engine deck, the engine deck was the last thing required in order to complete the tank's upper hull. The engine deck that you see here in this scene is left in mostly stock condition. The only additions that have been made to the engine deck that we see here is the deletion of the kit tool plug locations as well as a piece of styrene has been glued underneath for the gas cap in order to make it function. As like I mentioned in a previous update video, the engine deck is completely removable from the upper hull. This is a direct carryover from their 135th scale release, as well as having the engine deck detailing that we see here. The only difference is that on the 135th scale model, the engine hatches themselves were not molded directly into the engine deck and were two separate plastic pieces. Six scale counterpart, the hatches as well as the rear deck is all a single casted plastic part. Problem is, by doing this, DML went ahead and didn't add any etch lines for the engine hatch itself and the grab handles have been molded in as well as the hinges themselves. If you're going to go ahead and make the engine deck static in which you don't want to have the hinges to be functional that is an easy modification to do. As you can see DML already has two starter lines in these locations here to go ahead and add the rest of the etch work, you first with a ruler, mark it with a pencil, and then you can easily add the lines with that of a Dremel Multimaster or Multimax. For this build, however, I will be thoroughly deleting these hatches and replacing them with better detailed ones. The reason for doing that is because, as you can see, the grill work is solid. There is no slat detailing whatsoever and also the grills on every single plastic model Sherman tank that's out there in any scale is technically incorrect. Every single Sherman tank model from any company has the M4A3 or any Sherman with a grill representing this type of format here. As you can see you have the grill slits and then you have these three support ribs that go across. From looking at it you would guess that on the real Sherman tank the grill is comprised out of a square plate with three support ribs that are either cut into the plate or have been affixed via welds to the plate. This is actually an illusion. On the real Sherman tank, the grill that we see here, these pieces are actually weld beads. The slits are steel slits that are positioned vertical in the box and then three weld beads then go ahead and weld and secure everything together once complete. The reason for molding in this format here on any model Sherman is because this technique here molds very easily and replicates very easily with the plastic tooling with the injection molded that these kits are made of. In 135th scale it's not that noticeable as well as some of the other smaller scales. However, just like with a lot of the other softer details on this build, in 1 6 scale it's a lot more prevalent and a lot more noticeable. In the past on these M4A3 builds what I would do is I would remove the center portion of the grill work and replace the plastic slats with brass and steel slats which would all be soldered together. This procedure would take a very long time and was extremely tedious to say the least. However on this build I went ahead and developed a new replacement M4A3 engine hatch. The hatch that you see here is a new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line. And unlike the other components that are on the ECA product line, which are comprised out of resin or metal, these grills that you see here are actually made out of 3D printed material. Since the parts are 3D printed, all of the slats are present, and all of the detailing on the grill is one solid piece. There are no little bits of details to glue onto this component here. 
The new grills are extremely detailed. As you can see, they are see-through. They are not solid back like the kit originals. The slats are not only in scale, but are the correct number. And unlike the kit, which uses flat bars for the supports, on the new ECA grill, they are the proper weld beads that you see here. Also, like I mentioned before, everything is integrally printed onto the component, including the hinges, handles, as well as the interior detailing as well. This would include the descending slats, as well as the interior air duct. On the M4A3, the rear engine grills had these air ducts integrally built into them. The purpose of these air ducts is because of the Ford GA, GAA V8 engine, which utilized two large fans in this location here to cool down the radiators. The engine grills, in order to help funnel the air into the tank, when closed, would be in this format here and as you can see the air duct would make the flow of air a lot smoother into the radiators and out to the rear of the vehicle. Also because of the way the engine is mounted in the center of the vehicle the air ducts have to form this V-shape in order to clear that of the engine. The set not only includes the two hatches as well as it also includes a set of 3D printed hinges which also have their weld beads present on them. In addition to the 3D printed, printed components, the sets also include two fasteners for each hatch as well as the pins required to have the pieces actually hinge. The sets are 1 6 scale and will work on any 1 6 scale M4A3 on the market. And here goes the rear engine deck of the model now completed and ready for painting. As we can see, the 3D grills have been installed to the model, as well as new tool posts, as well as the functional cover cap. The 3D printed grills are fully functional and swing open very smoothly. In order to mount the 3D printed covers to the engine deck, a gutter had to have been fastened to the engine deck itself. The purpose of the gutter is that it prevents the hatch from swinging into the engine deck once the grill, the molding grill is removed. The real Sherman has this exact same feature present. As for the hatch ledge or gutter itself, it's fabricated out of strips of plastruck angle the plast the plastruct angle that I used was a quarter of an inch along the sides and I believe an eighth of an inch for the ends. The quarter inch angle simply glues to the dragon kit and once glued on creates the perfect little recessed ledge in order for the grill to sit nice and flush with the deck. Since the grills are made out of 3D printed material and are one solid piece, you don't have to worry about any of the ribs or any of the other components possibly getting brittle or falling off the model as time goes on. Also, because they, of the material they're made in, they're, if we notice they're very light. Because of this lightweight medium, it saves weight on the overall build and also puts a lot less stress on the hinging mechanism as well as the support frame that was added to the rear engine deck. Just like with the rest of the vehicle, the engine deck tool posts have been fabricated out of metal and have their welds sculpted on. Just like with the other tools, I will be using the ECA Sherman tool set as opposed to the stock tools that came with the Dragon kit. Also what was deleted was not, not just the tools, posts, but also the two little grab handles that we have here on the rear cover plate for the radiators. These are present on the kit, however they're molded in nubs as opposed to grab handles. The last bit of detailing that was worked on on the engine deck was that of the oil filler cap. This portion here is pretty much left stock. The only addition that was made were, was the addition of the weld beads that we have here. A small drainage plug 
hole was also drilled into this that was missing in this the stock kit and the last cover cap was added like with the other fluid cover caps it is fully functional the removal of a pin you'll be able to get access to the turned aluminum cover cap once it's installed after the tank is painted also added to the upper deck since the last update were the remainder of the casting and foundry marks that we have on the various cast pieces on the tank. This is present on both sides of the splash rims as well as on the turret itself. Here on the rotor drum, the mantlet, as well as some on the top portion of the turret. Also added to the build since the last video update are the brass Periscope brush guards. The kit does supply you with some plastic brush guards, however, rather than using the flimsy kit ones, I decided to swap them all out for fabricated brass ones. The brass brush guards that we see here are also listed on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. The brush guards are present on the tarred periscopes as well, on the loader scope, as well as the Tank Commander's Copulus periscope, that we have here. While on the turret, the tank shell ejection port has also been added. The shell ejection port hatch that we have here is a new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line. On the ECA catalog, I've always had a Sherman shell ejection port for several years. However, this port that we have here is specifically designed for the Dragon M483 Sherman tank. The hatch itself is a drop-in replacement of the kit original. What the ECA hatch has over the kit original hatch is the added cast texturing on the exterior, but it also has the interior detailing which is missing on the stock Dragon kit. The kit is sold as a set and only contains enough components for the hatch itself. The splash rim that we have here is left as on the kit as the kit splash rim is perfectly usable and was not needed to be replaced. The last bit of detailing that has been added to the model was that of the tank's 50 caliber storage equipment. All of the storage equipment that we see here is straight from EastCoastArmory.com and differs from the kit original. The DML kit represents that of a mid-production M4A3. On the mid-production unit, the barrel clamping system was a lot different than we have it here. On the original M4A3 from Dragon, the barrel would be designed to be secured on the top portion here of the turret. There would be two little clamps and the way they work is when you take the barrel out of the receiver it would snap into the clamps which be on the turret's roof. After that design the Sherman was altered for this mechanism that we have here. The way it works on the later production units is you have two angle iron braces that come out from the rear of the tank's bustle bin. The way they work is that the barrel once removed from the receiver would simply slide into these two little restraints and it would hold the barrel in this location over here as opposed to running on top of the tanks roof. As for the receiver clamp this is the same on the mid-production unit and the way that would work is that you would have the gun still mounted on the cradle you would remove it from the piddle mount and connect the entire cradle as the and the gun into this location here. This little clamp would then clamp onto the ventilated barrel shroud of the M2 and hold it firmly in place. As you see with this system here everything is centralized and you don't have t different parts of the gun lying on different portions of the vehicle. And that concludes this project update video for this 1 6 scale Dragon M4 A3 Sherman tank. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1-6 scale tank builds, as well as other 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.